Hey yo, you already know who it is. It's your boy, Tiny Films in the Cut. And we out here. Can you turn the light just to look at us? Yeah, that's good. And we out here. Episode. This is episode. This is episode seven. But it's actually episode. Nine. I did. I did. This is episode nine. nine. This yeah. is episode. This is technically episode. Technically nine, episode yeah. the ninth episode, but this is episode seven. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And we are out here. You know, the podcast solely about uh, or speaking to um, creators. You know, creators that are behind the creation of all my visual artists, all my all my photographers, all my filmmakers, scriptwriters, directors, etc. That thing that you're also thinking of is that thing as well. And today we are out here with i think the only graphic i mean graffiti artist that i know personally okay <laughs> and i think it's still kind of weird calling yourself just a graffiti artist which i'm still to get into but anyways kev sev what did you do, bro i'm good G, how are you i'm nice i'm nice 100 thanks for having me this is actually a special request so thanks bro, for keeping on that uh, we have been trying what one. was a special request uh, the, the episode seven yeah yeah because i saw you know <laughs> like I'm not blaming you for the fact that it took me a while to do episode eight, but like um, the way it just like you just were so busy during the time, and yeah. for me I was like ah let me just put on hold. Let me put on hold. I'm like you know what let me just do this. <laughs> and there was that um I think we did meet in between that there was in a between last minute uh, solid you actually hooked me up. Shout yeah out to that, yeah, yeah wait appreciate you know, that you know, straight and then after that yeah it was just. A little bit of miscommunication. Yeah, on my side. the schedules are also off, you know. Everyone yeah, gets yeah. busy and yeah. It's, yeah, it's hard to like actually keep up. Yeah. It happens. Um, but you've been up and down, bro. Like, have you been good though? I'm hundred percent, bro. My family's good. I'm mm. good. Um I'm actually in a better space now than I was, I would say the past two months have been a bit of a rough ride, bro. I'm actually I, actually I, that's actually me as well. Like yeah, the past two months have been a bit rough, bro. Yo, nah, I can actually Hey, you gotta pull yourself up, you know. Pull yourself towards yourself, mm. and then yeah, dog. Things what's are, been what's been the roughness? Like uh, people trying to get normal to the year, maybe, or is it just one of those patches? I think so. Work was a little bit slow. Um, just kicking off the year, like work was a bit slow. Mm. A lot of projects were also projects um, that were meant to have kicked off last year. So I was just getting those out the way. You know, a lot of these mural projects take a lot of pre-planning and a lot of pre-work before you actually get up there on a machine or on a ladder or get out there to paint. You know, there's a mm. lot of groundwork that happens. So I kind of felt like, ah, nothing's hitting because I'm just in this planning phase the whole time. Oh, damn. And then luckily everything unfolded almost all at once, which was... Because you were in the planning phase all at once, Fred. Yeah, for like half yeah. of last year, it was just mm. planning and planning. And then eventually everything just kicked off in like these last two months. So it became like very stressful to like, you know, handle this client here, yeah, handle and this handle client, like like at the same time, you know. So, so now that's what I was about to go on to. On to the, so you, you, sorry, you climb, what is that thing that you said? What's it called? Um, whether well, there's many things. There's ladders. There's scaffolding. There's cherry pickers. Okay. Yeah, cherry pickers. I guess the more advanced one, because that's the machine. The one that's like. Yeah, and you can control like where you go on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. control it personally. Yeah, or you get an operator. Operator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So le, le, yeah. <laughs> hey, Leah, shut this, Leah. Do you have like some kind of scaffolding when you're on that thing though? Like no, you no, of... you you wear a harness. No, oh, you got a harness. And so you have to wear a hard hat. Yeah. Oh, okay. So okay, you okay. so you lock yourself in. Yeah. It's got a cage. It's mm -hmm. a cage. Mm -hmm. Then you have your paint and all your stuff, and then you just put the harness clips on, and then you're pretty safe. You know, the machine also has a lot of safety things, but I have seen things go wrong. Not on my projects personally, but yeah, yeah, on some projects I've worked on, I've seen people fall. Yeah, like sometimes you're working with construction people. Yeah. And then, so on this particular project that I, I was working on... Um, is this one in Joburg or here? This is actually here in Durban, the, on, at Cambridge. Okay. Yeah, the, um, the one we did at Cambridge. So there's a guys that were plastering the wall, and then these guys went up. They're not meant to be using the actual cherry picker. They're meant to be using the scaffolding. Mm. And then the guy got stuck up there. Oh, and I was like, oh, shit, you know. 
How do you get it's, stuck over there? Uh, maybe the machine runs out of petrol, oh, or, yeah. or maybe there's a fault, like an error in the machine, and then mm. it, just, it just jams, and then you have to wait for the operator or the technician to actually come and sort it out. So there's a lot of safety. You have to do like some tests, you know, working at heights, because yeah. if you suffer from like low blood, blood pressure or high it's blood pressure, yeah, it's a problem, because when you're up there, your heart's oh, working okay, over time, because okay. you're in the air and like, it yeah. takes a couple of days to adjust. It's nerve, it's nerve wracking. Yeah, it's pretty nerve wracking, yeah. especially when it's windy and it's like wobbling. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I feel like we spit. Gangnam. Yeah, that was a, that was just a prequel. Yeah, we fast forwarded. <laughs> Gangnam, <laughs> you know, because you know, I don't know if many people from my side or the people that watch BTC do know Kev, mm. but I'm sure one or two do. Um, so yeah, give us the four on one, bro. So I was actually from born, where you grew up, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go, so go. okay, so I was born in Spingo, Spingo Hospital, mm -hmm. and then I grew up, spent most of my life in Mlazi, yeah. like my earlier before I went to grade one, and just a little bit of like grade one and two, I spent in Mlazi. I used to stay in BB section. Shout out to BB section. Yeah. Conjunction is also the guy from Conjunction is also from Simpia. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. Wrong. So shout out Conjunction with him. Yeah. Shout out to Conjunction. Bro. And then um, you grew up with him? No, 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 no. I'm, he's, I, I'm much older. Oh, you're yeah. much older. Okay. But uh, he's from the same section, actually. Oh, right, right. So grew up there, and then um, I went to school at Glenmore Primary. Yeah. I was at like, grade one and stuff, um, which is Mbilo, if you know Mbilo area. Yeah, I live in Mbilo area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched you move. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, then I stayed in Mbilo. Um, went to school, Glenmore Primary, and then eventually went to Glenwood High School. Was there any sports played in Glenmore? Did, I know there is, but like, did you play any sports? <laughs> I played all the sports. I all played soccer, cricket, hockey. They didn't have rugby though. Ah. I don't know why they didn't have rugby, because they had a very big field. Mm. Could have, you know. Um, okay, I didn't play tennis in primary, but I played tennis in Glenwood. So, like from primary school though, are you already doing art? No. No. Okay. I actually, when I left um, BB section to move um, to, to, to yeah, Mbilo, that was like a sort of a conscious move by my parents to, you know, show us something different, show us oh. a different life, and, and for them to before also before you get into primary school, whatnot. Yeah. So, so like, I don't know. I'm not saying. And I'm sure your parents weren't implying you would do something wrong growing up with Lokshin and that. No, but I think, you see, for me, there's there's certain stages. So every seven years, you have like a major life breakthrough, yeah. which is your early okay. development. Yeah, so okay. once I turn about eight, nine. That was like the, the, the yeah. page. Yeah, so yeah, to flip yeah. the page, we moved to a completely new suburb. And like, I think I was actually one of the first few black people in my road. That's me, bro. So Shout that was like, me. yeah, 1998 or 90, oh, uh, shit. 97, 98, yeah. Oh, okay. So it still had that weird, I was, like... I was actually born in 97. Oh, shit. I was a great <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, shit, okay. Word, word, word. <laughs> so like, you know, just to show us a different life and to yeah, see yeah. the other possibilities. And I think also for themselves, they had seen so much... Uh, Elokshini that I think they wanted to also change the narrative a bit, mm, yeah. Because mm. my parents were teachers, they educators. Oh, so yeah. they definitely know. Yeah, definitely. and actually some people that watch your show might know if you've got like a bit of an older audience. My father actually used to be the principal of Evuzaki High School, which Evo is quite High a, School. Yeah, which is... Lazy PP. No, no, no. I think it's uh, Mega V, I think. Mega v. I need to correct, clarify that. I don't know. Yeah, I think I maybe. That's up to interpretation. Vuguzake. Yeah. Yeah. Vuguzake. Vuguzake. Yeah. Hey, yo, it's a, it's a big you. school in them. You know that like, school there? Just shout out in the comments, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Let me know what year uh, you went there. And I can, like, call it my dad. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. So he was a principal there. And he was, he was making a lot of breakthroughs, you know? Like, even when I was in grade six, that was, like, my final year at, at Glenmore Primary. Yeah. And then he was awarded... Um, a lot of like black educators were in like the education department of education and were teachers. They got uh, offered 
um, bursaries for black kids to integrate into like white schools. Yeah. Remember? So I went to the school, which is like, you know, those schools that are run by, um, you know, those like Victorian type schools, like the, like the Queen of England has like, like gone the, to that the, school. the international schools. Yeah. Like, you know, like those, like Kersney is one of them. Michael House is Michael one of them. Michael House is one of them. Uh, Hilton. Chelsea. You know, you know, like, yeah, yeah St. Yeah. Henry's, yeah. Morris, but like, we it was like them. one of those schools. So I we think they were them. giving out bursaries to all those Just type don't of call schools. Them don't call them a white school. I see you, China. <laughs> I see your, your, your mouth moving. That, that, that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> for the sake of the show, though, yeah, I call yeah. it Victorian school. Yeah, I like that. Because, <laughs> no, for real, they had, like, you know, so schools that have a church on the, yeah. on the campus. Like, it was, I've never seen a school like that. It was, like, super big, you know? And then, um. It's just like a, <laughs> sorry, it's my phone. So it's like a, also, other school as well, next to Kersney, Highbury. Yes, that's the one I went to, Highbury, no uh, Crest. How do you know that school? <laughs> You're I, like the first person that said, like, Highbury. Yeah. It's like a small No, 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 school. I coach. I coach hockey, so they play, they're big in hockey. Yeah, yeah they, they're, they're big in, like, a lot of things. Yeah, you know? check. So then that's how, that's how we get that I have fun. Ah, oh, fuck, sorry. <laughs> uh, off the hook, off the hook. Just answer my phone. Where is your phone? Don't you have it? Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, Sorry about that. So, um, so, so I went to high school. Yeah, I went to high school. Oh, okay. That was okay, about okay. 2004. Just for grade seven only. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. And like, so, how has that shift there from Glenmore to. Because um, I'm sure Glenmore as well is like uh, still predominantly the same race. It's it's actually it's a co ed school and also it's multiracial. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. E Glenmore. Yeah, Glenmore was super integrated already. And then. Not hybrid. Yeah. Nah, hybrid was all boys, and um, you could have an option of being a day scholar or being a boarder, of which I was a boarder just from Monday to Friday. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so that was very different because Glenmore Primary was like, like I'm used to being around girls and like oh, now you're multiracial boys, people. Damn, like I ain't never been like to old girls, man. And like, I mean, old boys. I was really? Never in that. No, I was never in that. I was. Yeah, that was also a different forever. like frequency change for me mm. and like the school the crazy thing is the school had like super facilities but they didn't have soccer and basketball i mean those sports are as black as you can get bro. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't have them and like for me i was like no i this is literally what i played at glenmore soccer <laughs> and, uh, basketball. and basketball um so yeah we we gathered up some homies um and then yeah, we like they had this crazy indoor facility. I'm sure you've seen. Yeah. Like that yeah. shit is like wow. <laughs> like, why are you not playing? In like that as wow, well? yeah, they've got the facility. So we just encouraged the, the the teachers to like see what we're talking about and then try it out. And it actually worked really well. Um, we would hook up like five a side tournaments, basketball things, and like our school was never recognized because you know um, the highway region is Pine Town, Westville. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we would end up playing games at like Pine Town, Westville, Kloof, um, Thomas More, I think. We oh. never played like any school down here. Yo, Kersney's, your whatnot. But Kersney's a high school. This, no, this is a, this is uh, in Glenmore Primary or Highbury. This is in Highbury. Oh. Like, like like the switch from grade six to seven because. Oh, but it's six, cool because they at least they they do versus big schools now. Yeah, I'm sure they do yeah, now, they yeah. Do, they do. So, yo, if you see Hybrid mm -hmm. playing basketball, soccer, it's because of us, bro. Oh, shit. Y'all brought the culture. We brought the culture. They didn't Damn. understand. You know, they, like, they had the facilities, but they they didn't know how to, like, go about it. So, like, we just... Left you know, a legacy. You know as what kids. I'm saying? You know, as like kids, years that's old. what changed my whole life experience, I won't lie, is, like, switching Damn. to that school... I saw a completely other world that, like, I didn't even know existed. But you came and you implemented your world as well. Yeah, like, oh, it was, yeah. yeah. I couldn't just, like, be overwhelmed by everything mm -hmm. they're offering. Because for me, it was also different to wake up and have to go to, like, church. Because yeah. that's what it was like. You go to church in the, in the morning, like, and then you have your breakfast. Like, it kind of felt very military, but it was yeah. it was cool. It, it teaches discipline, which is nice. Uh, right? Yeah, that's what I was about to say as yeah. well. Um, boys' school definitely there's like a lot of discipline that's taught there. Because I know as well, coaching at 
DPHS. I call it DPHS. Mm. I'm sure you know it. Yeah, DPHS. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and DHS, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so me going from uh, primary school, high school, uh, co-ed, uh, then high school is just coaching now. These these orcs, yeah, these old boys, and it's, I think it's very cool. It's very cool how you know. I'm not saying they're more respectful. Mm. Maybe that's what I'm saying. But yeah, like, it's just like it's. it's like, totally they definitely like emphasize it and make it a thing. Yeah, you know. And there's a lot instilled in, in you, and like it's mm. the way that they they drill it into you that it like just becomes a way of life and a way of also seeing things. Hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, so with your your rents moving you to like the suburb of not does, um, what like what do you think like for for your for your kids? Mm. Um, obviously being lived in two different worlds as well. Like, would you want them to grow around? What type of environments would you want your kids to grow around? I think... And I think, and I think the type of environment that you would want your kids mm. or anything that you would want your kids is what, is what you would have also wanted. Yeah, because, okay, so... So Emma Kai is like Ladysmith, Emma Mbiti for me, right? So that's like where I got a bit of like farm experience of okay. like, so, you so, so my grandmother, my mother's, so my mother's side and my father's side are from Mnambi. So that's yeah. like, so they obviously met in university, but they both from that side. You okay. Know? And like, for me, it helped coming from Mlazi, knowing that there's, there's the farm life as well. And then, now having gone to a, a suburb and lived in a suburb, it's like I've got a sort of 360 experience. Like I know, Ooh. I know Ukshizila from in my farm. Like you know, like waking up and parting in a in a in tub yeah. in the issue, like having to prep everything. You have to think of it in a way of you preparing. Like you can't just go and part, turn on the tap and part. Oh, it's, damn. shit is not that easy. You can't just start. Put the stove on and cook. Oh, Everything okay. is like it's planned and yeah, it's a process. One by one. So I totally get that and like Elokshini, it's it like it taught me how to stay com um, connected to your surroundings. Like mm -hmm. everyone in the in the neighborhood knows everyone. Ah, this guy stays in that section. If someone random walks in your area, you know it's like hey, I've never seen that person before, and you can discuss like it's it's community. I understand community from living in Las, and then the suburb. I don't really know what the suburb really taught me, but the suburbs is like, it's like where you can start to now build a life of your own and choose any of these experiences to yeah. live out, you know? Yeah. yeah. But I think uh, also su suburb is like higher standard of living. Higher standard of so, living, yeah. So um, I guess uh, it just, it al I think, I think, it just allows you to be able to like, kind of step back and, 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 and see the lessons that you've gathered yeah, up. 100%. You know, instead of just getting in there and then it's kind of like... You just get lost in the sauce. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to get lost in the sauce. But you definitely get lost in the sauce. Because you don't want to feel like, yo, nigga, I made it type of thing. Yeah, you... Okay, well, Mbilo is like a white township. Ah. Yeah, obviously as a black person moving there... But it's like, yeah, it's the highest end of living, but... Jail, like, full each other. True, and also you're lives. getting, you know, like at school, you're getting called names, because like, everyone, you used to go back in the same car. Yeah. Or like, oh, you know, Omalume, I was one of those kids that like got picked hey, up by Omalume, you know? Hey. And like, you know what the kids say, like, maybe one year they're seeing you getting picked up from a PP, and then the next year you're not getting, you're not seen there anymore. You're like... Wearing another uniform. You, now you're uniform. getting picked up in the suburb, and everyone's like, "How? How? Dude, when since when? Yeah, yeah like, is this you? And then, like, you know, you get called those names. Yeah. Or she's boy. Or, yeah. And or, then that's the thing, or though. Or so whatever. You, once you now you get into the environment of a she's boy, then you actually look at it. Cheese boy, I want to keep saying words of commas. Yeah. Okay. Then you look at words, cheese boy, as like in a different way. You're like, yeah. oh. Now we used to call the guy that used to live in the suburb of cheese boy, but like now that you're in the position of a cheese boy, it's like it's yeah, and like there's a lot like, to actually respect. It's like I think it's yeah. also just a mental block that we have. It's like yeah. like like we feel like when when we change or we adapt or we evolve, like obviously certain people ain't gonna like that because they're not evolving with you, mm -hmm. and as much as like you wanna also fight that. 
good side of yourself, you've got to integrate it now into this into this new setup, you know, into the suburb life. It's different, you know. You don't look at life the same anymore. Straight up. You still have the values that you learn in the hood and like I would say that like it taught me how to be street smart. Like yeah. the hood teaches you like like not everyone can just like walk all over you or mm. you gotta see the signs before they happen type things. Yeah, you know, your sense of awareness is different. I see. So yeah, you know, you get called those names and and people like they don't understand it. You don't understand it because like your parents moved. Yeah. You don't know shit you about what's going flow. on. You have to go but with then the your, flow. your niggas are with you every day, so they the ones that are gonna get to you. Yeah, and they're seeing you now. You got a lot packed lunch, and like, like, hey, you know, and it's just different. <laughs> yeah, gee, so, so it's like it's nothing that you can like stop on your own. You just gotta like go with it, you know, mm. and you gotta learn how to adapt to the new way. And I'm actually grateful that I moved because like, I remember like a lot of people that I was in Mlazi with. Yeah. And like, they're not in the best shape. Mlazi is a great township, don't get me wrong. And it's a great community and it's a great place. Yeah. It's, but a lot of those people didn't get anywhere close oh. to what could possibly be, you know? Oh, shit. Yeah, like, like you're they still stuck lost. in the same yeah you're still stuck in the same way of thinking and then you never think that there's anything else possible because oh. you've never seen anything else you've never been exposed sure. everything's a hood you're in the school in the hood you so you, once you, you grow get up to the there. suburbs it gives you a chance to indulge it gives you a chance to also so explore just, yourself to see like okay wait maybe i don't yeah. like house maybe i actually like hip-hop oh shit maybe i don't like cavellas maybe i like yeah. adidas uh. You know, like it's almost a certain level of comfortability. Mm, you you, you start to like, shed that off, and now you can see, and you can now rebuild yourself the way you want to see. And not yourself. that living in the suburbs is the best thing in the world. No, not even it's got no. its it's got its cons as definitely, well. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and when I moved, I was like the only black person, so you can imagine. Like, yeah, and even in that school hybrid, it was like yeah, there's only a few of us black people that got the scholarship. And there was only one black teacher. Yeah, heavy. So, and he was a Zulu teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, bro. So, like, you can imagine, oh, shit happened on the, in the school, you know? Shit yeah. happened. And, like, yeah. it, it was bound to happen. Yeah. You being integrated in a new school where, like, they have never really been with anyone else but themselves. So, mm. it's understandable in a way. I wouldn't say it's justified, but it's understandable. Yeah. So... Yo, that's a long story about primary school. <laughs> about school, the growing up. Oh, primary it's my growing school. up story. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. <laughs> so um, in high school, you, you still haven't said when the, the arts kicked in, actually. Um, so we get into high school, and is that when it kicks in? I'm yeah, sure. that's... So I would say um, because I started skateboarding, there was a dude that actually skateboarded. He was really good on the skateboard. Mm. Um, his name was Sean. Um, he was a very good tennis player as well. And like... I was like, hey, this feels cool, you know? Like, I, he used to skate and bring his board to, like, school and stuff. Um, this is when I was in grade seven. Mm. I'd be like, yo, this, this shit is lit, bro. This all can, like, flip the board and you can do these crazy things. And, like, mm. you're seeing everyone going wild and you're like, hey. Me, I want to do this. I want to do that, I want people bro. to go wild for this me. Is, I want to do that, bro. <laughs> like, look how dope. And, you know, they had the skater shoes and yeah, he had the whole yeah, swag yeah, and everything. Yeah. And I was like, ah, no. And Actually, Vel, growing up, you Vel already be like being drawn to the the hip hop skate type of skate culture yeah yes. so as soon as like so like in grade 7 which is like 04 mm. i had noticed that in my area as well there was like there was something happening there was like a shop it was called the yard it was a graffiti shop and i just noticed that every time i went to the bottom of my neighborhood which is like more of mbilo mbilo you know yeah i noticed like hey I'd always see some difference in like something, whether like someone's put a sticker on a sign or someone's put their name on it. I'd always notice like, hey, something's changing constantly. Yeah, there's people moving and there's this underground, like, like you, you don't know what it is, but you can notice that like things are changing and things, yeah. there's a culture that's living in this area. So I was like, you know, then obviously when you're skateboarding, you're in the streets all the time. And then I actually got a chance to like open my eyes and like 
see shit because now I'm traveling everywhere with my board. I'm going to Berea. I'm going to Queensburg, which is like a huge influence on me as well. Like, is it? yeah, a the, certain area. Yeah, because but the graffiti scene was like very active there in Queensburg. Oh. Queensburg, Bluff, um, like an Ambilo for me. Was so the like, first type of artistry that you were interested in that is tagging. Yeah, because actually the first artist that I saw was um, Ewok, but he wasn't yeah. obviously going by the name Ewok at the time. But um, I'm sure people know him. He's a he's a he's an OG, you know, mm. super OG. And I'm actually grateful to have worked on projects with him because yeah. it was like, yeah, it was like a fan moment, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, and that, and he's and he's a very cool dude, and mm. he's very like open. So you know, even like sharing. The worst, you know what's the worst the worst part is like when you meet your like your fan guy. Yeah. Like you look up to guy and you like finally get to thing and then they just they just they, shit. They disappoint. I won't lie, a lot of them disappointed, but he was, he was one of the dudes that was So I'm like solid, like yeah. like and it's not that like I'm encouraging people to do it for people. <laughs> but don't be a dick. Like, you don't know who's right next to you that admires you. You don't know who's but, studying you, yeah. But now they won't even tell you anymore. Not that you need to hear it, but they won't even tell you anymore because you're just a dick and they've met you now. And they're like, ah, I can't do this guy in shit. Mm. You know? True. And a lot of the guys are like, ah, ah, I don't think I'm ever ah, playing to this guy. Again. Oh, I've always <laughs> wanted to work with a certain group, get to that mm. group ish. Do you have, have you met any of your, like, do you have like photo and video, like, like who are you a fan of? Like, I'm a fan. I guess in the in the like it changes really. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it changes seasonally or like that time when I'm focused in a certain thing, then I'll be uh, a fan of this person and so and so so and so. Mm. But I've been fans of my friends, like okay. actually like when I because they. But your idols? Have you met any like like have you met any of your like? I don't have a oh, really. Yeah, okay. uh, I, it, it would happen. What it would happen the other way around. Where that's why I'm saying like, like I'm fans of my friends because mm. I would meet someone, then I'll go in front of them, and then I'll realize they think, and they will be like, oh shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I would know them before even actually. Okay. Like oh, them. like getting together on that work trip. Or yes. Like, yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay. Yes. Um, because. Uh, there's nothing wrong with idolizing guys. There's nothing wrong. Mm, but mm. I've I, personally, I just have this mindset that you know, but if I just think about them too much or something like that, I'm gonna end up just trying to do them or trying to do their moves or something like that. Mm. You know, it doesn't happen. But like, it's just this paranoia I have. Mm. Yeah, well, but they like, I get you. Like, music video wise, Cow White. Kawhi's pretty cool. He does all those music videos, ne? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. He does, he does very dope music videos. Mm. You know? And mm. like, he's seems like a very active, very talker guy. Mm. You know? So I would like to be on set with him because I feel like I'll just, you know, like learn Pick up so, so much. much. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Um, a homie of mine that I grew up with, he's a creative director now. Ooh, Umonde Kumet. Okay. Um, I don't think. Maybe if I see the work, I don't know. Yeah, I, he shot his recent work. Uh, oh, he directed. Um, Shekana's short film. I, I need to watch that. I yeah, actually I'm saw sure. she. I saw there was this one week where everyone was just Shekana was on everyone's yeah, timeline. Yeah, she dropped. Like, she dropped that thing. What is Go going check on it out. Directed by Mon. Mon to like the world. Mm, yeah, world, yeah. World, world. I'd, I'd really like to work with. I really like to uh, work. Well, with you've them. you've Come put on. it out there, so I'm yeah. sure that's gonna happen. Yeah. But there's one two people I've met. I don't want to mention them by name. Yeah. Then when I met them, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like. Ah. This person ain't see, shit. Right. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, but yeah, that happens. That happens. So, sorry, sorry. You were there. Uh, you work with this guy. That yeah, so cool. like he was a dude that I saw, like, because he, that was the first name I could read. He was he was writing accent at the time. And I was like, AKS. And then I saw accent and I was like, wow, that's such a cool name. Mm. Who writes accent all over the fucking show? And then I just got deeper, it went into the rabbit hole, and eventually I was like, nah. Then I eventually figured out more, like with each breakthrough, so you figure out like, hey, I actually seen this name in Berea. I've seen this name in Hillcrest. 
I've seen this name, like, and you realize, okay, someone is out there doing this thing. And when you're skateboarding, you bump into some people, like, at the skate park. Yeah. This is early North Beach skate park mm-hmm. days, like, before it changed to how it is now. But, um, yeah, like, then you, you, you just catch on, and, and each step you unlock a new phase, and you unlock a new phase yes. until you get the courage enough to, like, okay, I know enough about this culture. I'm going to make my own name, and I'm going to start my own little movement, you know. This is great. This is great. Grade eight, yeah. Like oh, high so school. you just got to high school. Skateboarding. I so meet it's other not people. really uh, the school that inspired you in any way? No. It's the Nje. It's, 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 I would say there's like, there's moments. One thing unlocks another. One door unlocks another okay. door. So like skateboarding unlocked the, um, the, the street culture. But I'd always been into hip hop because we had a VCR. My brother used to actually make his own mixtapes. Oh, damn. Like, my brother used to, like, wait for Channel O and then, like, take one of my dad's boxing tapes, like, and, like, over, like, you know, override them or overdub them, record over them, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, Channel O's playing, he's just recording the music video. And they had, like, this long, like, music video thing at night. You used to have to wait for it yeah, in the yeah. evenings, and then Channel O's just got music video after music video after and music video. And you just record all of that. And then Wu-Tang Clan is actually the first music video that I ever saw, like, that I ever actually acknowledged, like. Oh, what's the A? Wu-Tang, yeah, like, these guys are wearing, like, this crazy and fashion, Timberlands, and, like, the music video, they even yeah, had these crazy black. effects. Like, effects was not really a thing in the early 90s. Mm-hmm. And, like, they had people transforming into, the song was called, it's a killer piece, it's an anthem. Mm. And like, the effects was just so crazy. And I was like, what? Like, the background had like graffiti. It was like, super like, like, like hood, you know? I was actually listening to um, a podcast last week by Wandering DP. And he was actually, he's a, he's a filmmaker. Mm. And he's actually, he had a guest over and the guest, the, the first uh, video that he ever shot, someone gave him a camera mm. and said, hey, shoot you for that same video. Mm. <laughs> no ways. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> oh, I must meet this guy. <laughs> that shit inspired me. Like, I used to play this tape, I used to play this one song, like, over and over and over until, like, I got every single person because there's, like, there's eight or nine members in the Wu-Tang mm, mm, mm. and, like, in this track, they like, most of them rap. Mm. And I was trying to get every single person's part correct. Oh, see, this is this is who, this is who. You know, like no, like they rap one after the other. Oh, okay. You know, and I then guess like, that, that uh, was me for 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 pro era. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, pro era came out with a bang. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit is ill. And like, so that's when I realized I'm a I'm a fanatic. Like, mm. I'm I'm like hooked on this shit. Mm. And then from there, every music video, Cisco, like. Boys to men, like it, like super old school stuff. Aaliyah, like the R and B, like everything was just like about this hip hop shit was just like interesting to me. Yeah, skateboarding, like seeing crisscross, cause that's like the one time I ever saw like kids in the videos. Mm. Like little kids are rapping and the shit is big, and I was like, this is it. I'm in the right place. <laughs> like I don't know how I'm gonna figure this shit out, and but like, I'm figure it out. But it's gonna it's gonna happen. It's gonna unfold, and everything from there just unfolded into like hip-hop culture and then in grade in grade eight this is oh five there was this huge durban event uh it was it was an annual event called bling free and it was held at albert park you know where um yeah i see the, the wunga people are smoking now yeah yeah that was like an epicenter of durban hip-hop culture mm. like workshop terminals of course freestyling on fridays and whatever and like going and seeing ciphers, that was like a big thing for me. Like my one friend, uh, Zane, actually, shout out to Zane. He's the one that like at school he was like, "Hey, I heard this is this event. Let's walk." We had no, we had we had no pocket. We didn't get any pocket money. We we couldn't catch a bus. All we could do is just like get some weed and just walk, bro. Like get you know like full a two liter bottle of water and just walk. And like, dude, we walked from our house in Bela to Bad Center. You. And like, when we got there, we were like, fuck, this shit is ill. This was worth the fucking walk. <laughs> and like, yeah, that, that's when I realized, okay, Durban's like, you know, like, 
Durban's on. Like there was there was a lot of MCs. Like and all I could do at the time was beatbox. Me and Zane, we would beatbox in the ciphers. Hear the O's rap and it was like epic. You know, there's the graffiti guys doing the mm. shit mm. while there's like and you don't even break have dances. To, you don't even have to do much. It's just nice to be within that. Yeah, we didn't know. Like, and when we saw that there's like so many kids and there's so many people taking part, we we're like, okay, this is a community. We need to work we our way into this community. We gotta take part. Somehow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And like yeah. we that's when you realize it's alive. Hip hop is a real living thing. It lives within people and it lives within spaces. You know what I'm saying? And like, that was a very pivotal moment. That's when you're like, okay, we're doing this shit. So like, Zane right now, he does tattoos on the South Coast. If you're ever in Scottsboro, hit up the Zane Revel. Shout out to Zane Shapeshift Revel. Inc. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to Zane, yeah. So you know, like, hip hop has got a space for everyone. That's, yeah. that's what I fell in love with. I fell in love with like, okay, there's people dancing, there's people like singing, poetry, rapping. There's people beatboxing, there's people that make beats, DJs, like everyone had a part to play. And that's what I really loved about hip hop. It was like, you know, the people that dressed up, like, like everyone had a space, a home in hip hop. Uh -huh. That's what I really loved, yeah. So then when does the, okay, I'm not beatboxing now, I'm picking up a can and start spraying now, come in. Well, I was always drawing on the desk yeah, in yeah. high school because okay. even on the desk, you know, you change classes, you move yes, around yes, with different yes. teachers and this. So is that when you started to take Kev Sev? No, Kev Sev is actually, um, I started that 2021 now. I started that about 2016. 2015. Yeah, that's recent. I was going under a different name. It was more of an underground what name. Um, <laughs> Why are you thinking of it like you don't even remember it? Dang, it's on the top of you. <laughs> Well, okay, well, in graffiti, you write various names until you find hey, what you come to with. Hey. <laughs> Come on, fam, it's underground, but, but Webs was like, Webs was like the shit. Well. Webs with a Z? No, the S. W-E-B-S. Because so, Spider-Man was my favorite cartoon <laughs> character. And like, and you can't go I just wanted something that like no one had. Like a lot of people use the same letters, the same combinations that flipped around. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, no, I need something like let me take, let me draw a bit of inspiration from some comic shit and like, like So, hey. can you please tell us for a lot of people that are wondering, Okay. Kev Sev, where does that come from? <laughs> it actually comes from um, high what? school. Oh, okay, no, no, I was about to ask where does webs come from, but we remember now Spider-Man. Yeah, it comes from Spider-Man. Yeah. So, Kev Seven comes from, you know, like people rhyme, you know, like you people rhyme your name, like, Kevin, seven. Kevin, seven, yeah. heaven. Yeah. Like, you know that corny shit, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like high school rap. Yeah. yeah. That's where it came from. And then you're just like, like, with, so with graffiti, you usually have your, your, you, you have a name and then you have a number. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's like a cool thing to do. It's oh. Like to integrate a name it? and a number. Like, someone said it to me. Yeah, so like you'll be like tiny one or like probably yeah. You're just saying, good see, yeah, uh, yeah. It's a graffiti artist thing to have it a is. number. So like you'd be like tiny but one. But I was like to a, no, I honestly, don't know any other artist graffiti artist that has a number. <laughs> okay. Yeah, was, you were the only one. Yeah, so so I would be like tiny one. Yeah, like or yeah, like tiny one or let's just say you say tiny two. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like something cool, like, yeah. and, but everyone used to use the name, the, 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 the sure, number one. I don't know anyone like, that has a number. I was like, I don't want to use the number one. Like everyone uses the number one. So then I was like, Kevin Seven. Yeah. And then I was like, hey, that's actually not too bad. That's like, it's catchy. Actually. I just got to work it. Yeah. Like <laughs> at first I couldn't draw it and I didn't know like. How to slip it in. Mm, and then I was just like, no, Kev Seven. Kev Seven. Mmm, mmm, Kev Sev sounds nice. And I was like, ah, okay, let's go with it. Oh, shit. And then I ran with that, and then, like, I figured, okay, I can flip it up, you know? Kev Seven, I can write it out in full. I can just have Kev in the number seven. Mm. I can write Kev's, because a lot of people also call me Kev's, like, hey, yo, Kev's. So, yeah, that was, like, that's the vibe, like. And then I was like, okay, no, this should can work, like, publicly, because... The problem I was having, which led up to Cave 7, was that everyone knew I was doing art, but no one could identify which art was mine because it was so underground. You never oh, told. It was yeah. so secretive. And you, so you weren't taking webs? I was taking webs, but like it was so underground. Like No one knew 
me as Kevin writing webs, you know, type of vibe. So it was that's that's the nature of graffiti. It's so you think you think you started people started knowing you when you started taking Kev Sev? It became more apparent to everyone, yeah. That oh. like, okay, dude, we know you're an artist, but like, 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 what is it? How do we see what is yours? And then I was like, actually, you know what? It's time. Every time, it's so. the time, yeah. Like, because yeah. I'd meet so many people just from being out there in the street, skateboarding, or like all of my friends were like creatives, like whether they tattoo or whether they like Some got a camera or like whether you, yeah. you're a DJ or. Like, that was all I was always surrounded with. But like, they must hit them up so they can come through. To the show? Yeah. For sure, show. for sure, for sure. You know, behind the creations, you can hit subscribe and the bell button right now. Follow us on Instagram. Like, like, like. Yeah, sorry, you were saying. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Um, so, yeah, man, that's that's the culture. That's the and story. Show. That's then the... I, I came to Kev7 and then, like, I noticed, like, the more consistent progression in my work. Oh, damn. Yeah, like, like now I'm actually, like, my intent is to, like, super good at this shit. Yeah. And like I can flow and funnel all the energy into just this one name instead of like being super underground and like, yeah, you get respected by your peers that are also doing the same thing and like, it's an industry as well, you know? Yeah. But I was like, well, I like as much as I like being underground, I also want to come out into the light. Like I don't want graffiti to be this mysterious thing anymore. I want the average Joe to be interested in graffiti. Oh, shit. Like, I want people to acknowledge graffiti. Mm. And I, that's when I was like, okay, I need to put myself out there and people need to know that I do graffiti. I so now graffiti. what do you say for like, okay, you do painting as well though. Yeah, painting. So can you tell us about that? Or like... Like, like you like never me. really put it out there. You just say graffiti. Well, well, graffiti is actually more of like an act, you know. It's you... It's the act of taking an instrument and making a mark somewhere. Oh, so graffiti can be through painting. It doesn't have to really be a spray pe- spray can. It's, well, it's more commonly known for spray paint. But yeah, I mean, if, as the cave guy was yeah, doing... Yeah, sorry, can you speak closer? Yeah, the cave, the cave painters were also doing graffiti. They were using just rocks and whatever paste they could make into a paint. And then, you uh. know... So it's like, it's like you're documenting as you go on. So like... I was, it's to say like I was in the space and I completed this mission. Mm. You know what I mean? It's it's quite a discipline from like you drawing, having an idea, going sightseeing to like see different spots and then you completing this mission of you putting your name in this place that you've just seen, you know? Definitely. And then like, you putting your work, it's like marketing. Think of it in a marketing and advertising perspective. Sure. It's like, how many billboards do you see? Like, same billboards, like, whatever brand it may be, they'll put a billboard in Westville, they'll put a billboard in town, they'll put a billboard in workshop, and like, you at any point can drive past any one of those, but it's the same advert. Yeah. So it's like me putting my name everywhere. Everywhere. And same like, person. Same person, just you, you're advertising yourself, you're marketing yeah. your work by putting it in a space. Yeah. 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 So um, I know you've, uh, like, as you're an graffiti artist, you've been able to s- sustain yourself financially. Mm. I'm not going to talk about how much you make. No. <laughs> no pocket <laughs> watching. <laughs> <laughs> you've been able to sustain yourself, you know, get gigs, not like obviously like every day, that type of thing, you know. Mm. Um, but I'm sure there's like, I know in the arts industry, you know, us being okay. in the industry, it's very hard, yeah, but it's like very hard, like to keep up the consistency, just, yeah. It's a consistency to, to be able to yeah. eat from it. Nah, 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 so for graphic designers, like, I'm sorry, I'm a graffiti artist okay. out there. A lot of them are graphic designers, but yeah. Oh, okay. And then you integrate it with. The fact that you can like paint it big, you know. Oh shit! Mm. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Yeah. So, but um, I don't know. Like some kind of advice that you can give them, you would say like, uh, I don't know. Like, I guess me. Like before I actually started, before I made you through general, of course. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I actually met you at that rooftop. Remember we were painting oh, yes. that one? Oh, there we go. Yeah, that time, yeah, actually. Yeah. It was that time there. Uh, and it, that was my first time being amongst, um, like, actually see who's the one painting this wall. Mm. You know, because mm. I've never seen it. You know, but I'm seeing it now, and it's a whole lot of people. I'm actually shooting it. Yeah, but it was, like, very cool. It was very interesting. Um, then also finding out how these people make money, because I even know they make money type of thing. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Like, do you, do you have anything to say for the kids? Hey, well, as I'm saying, I started in 2004, so that's like. So you've been doing this for 17 years. Yeah, and it's obviously like there's moments in between where like you're not sure if it's gonna work or ooh, if it's gonna work. Ooh. Like, like there's moments of doubt. So I guess those the most, that's my question. Yeah, because like those moments of doubts. Like, how how have you like? So for me personally in Pick Durban, I saw a gap because like a lot of the artists ended up moving out of the city. Joburg. Um Some of them international. Some of them Cape Town, Joburg. Some of them even like just became like people that surf. So you'd, you'd never go to Joburg? I wouldn't say that much, bro. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, I just came from Joburg. <laughs> and it's looking really promising. It's looking... <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you gotta go where you gotta go. You and gotta they showed mad go. love in Tropic, so that's cool. But so a lot of these artists like moved and started doing different things. Some became tattoo artists, some of them became advertised, they worked in advertising. You know, like it's like a really good starting point. So a lot of the time, so in about 2009, I was in Matric in 2009. Yeah. That's when I saw a decline in the scene, you know. The industry, like the Durban creative scene, where I was like, "Hey, no one's painting anymore. No one's like, like people are like wanting to throw in the towel because there's a lot of stuff happening. As graffiti is an illegal thing, there's an illegal aspect and an illegal aspect. Okay, and everyone starts off usually in the illegal aspect. Can so, you explain it to? Um, well, like if I tag on your wall, that's illegal. You can lock me up for that. Oh, okay. so you know what I mean? Like a lot of yeah. people were like like getting really big, you know, and they're like obviously causing a stir in the scene. People didn't understand graffiti at the time. It was still young. So a lot of people had to actually break that groundwork and make those initial mistakes for like the rest of the people that came in the gate to like flourish and take it to a new level. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, man, like I forgot about the initial question I was actually getting there. To, like, the, to, to the people out there, man. That oh, yes, yes. So it takes a show. long time. There's moments of doubt. I personally saw that as a gap. This one dude, I remember we were at this party at Willowville, um, Good Music Tuesday. For those who are the same age and older, there was this cool drum and bass thing. And he was like, hey, dude, no one's painting. You should, like spearhead the movement bro. if you see it you see it no one else is seeing it everyone wants to quit you seeing it and i was like hey that he's right huh? he's actually right he's actually right bro. it's an opportunity i've let the big boys play i've done enough learning now it's time for me let to me like step in. let me step in yeah so so from then about like 2008 i'd say between 2007 and 9 were like the years where i was like okay i'm gonna do this shit and then in high school, I realized I was not, like, uh, I played last team rugby. I fucking decided to join the chess team because I really love chess. Started to play tennis. Um, that was also cool. But I was, like, last team for everything, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, ah, this shit is not hitting, bro. <laughs> I doubt I'm going to be a professional soccer player. I doubt I'm going to be any rugby. <laughs> like, I liked it, but it wasn't for me. And I realized, yeah, yeah. shit, this is the only thing that stuck with me for that much of a long time. Mm. And obviously I had to drop the bomb on my parents and they were like, like they're like, you know, like any black parents, bro, they're like, oh, how are you gonna get a job? Oh, how sure. are you gonna like, like raise a family? And mm -hmm. I was like, sure, that's a lot to think about right now. <laughs> I'm right. just out of high school, but yeah, you know, I was like, wait, art is actually what I need to be doing. Oh, sure. That was like the change. Were the Reds ever against art? Mm, they were scared because so on my father's side there's musicians. Oh, okay. So his his brother, um, Mateo Baba Mungane, he's his all of his kids are musicians. Then on my mom's side, um, my uncle used to be a sound engineer for like jazz bands sure. and jazz players back in the seventies, eighties. Sure. 
He used to engineer for them, and like all of his kids are artists. Mm. So I was like, come on. Mm. It's only inevitable that we're going to become artists. And for like, you to understand. Come on. <laughs> and the, but they were just fearful because my uncle had been like messed over and oh, the music industry was rough back then, you know? And they were like, ah, oh, I don't want you like falling into that trap or like, how, like how are you going to do it? And I was like, I don't know how, but it's going to be revealed to me along the way. But mm. I just need, this is the one thing that's going to keep me out of trouble. Calling me. Exactly. And it's going to keep me out of trouble. Everyone else is like, you know, getting into drugs and like uh, following that mm. route, the party route. And I'm, so like, I'm like, I just want to get good at this shit. So like, at least I can be good at something. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. just like a talentless motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yes. yeah, man, and then I guess that's when I made my breakthroughs in about 2009, and then I decided, okay, I'm gonna study a bit of art. I went to CFAD, Center for Fine Arts, Animation and Design. Went to that school, did that for three years, got a diploma, and then my parents were like, well, you didn't have a degree. So you need to ask a degree, bro. Oh, sure. More school, dog. So you school again. So I enrolled in Howard College oh, yeah. from 2013, and then I graduated 2017. And there I was doing media, English, and I did a couple of music, um, like oh, add-ons, yeah. Oh, shit. So then it's like everything, like you got to like find the loopholes to keep yourself going. I'm not an academic. I saw like me throwing papers and making paper planes in the class, right? So I get bored very quickly with like, shit that's not for me like if i have to learn about shakespeare i'm like ah, come on dog. what shakespeare am i gonna go to a girl like oh that beauty be fine <laughs> whatever like come on bro like that ain't it bro. so i was like ah no i that? need to learn like music or i need to stick with this creative shit mm -hmm. and i found my loopholes like studying music at howard or being interested in media because it relates to what I'm already doing, you mm. know? So that's how I kept myself from like, how I shut out the doubts basically. It's like, hey, just keep going. Keep, keep like, going. yeah, just keep going. Like you, you literally have no choice. You can't mm. like, like, you know. And I mean like for me, Howard was a game changer because there were so many creative people. Yeah, Even if they you. didn't paint or make music, they were like, yo, I want to like mess with these clothes or I want to like, do events and like have you guys oh. here at the event. So like I latched on with that crowd and mm. like that's where I started to see like, okay, I can't just be a graffiti artist on my own. I need to like latch on to the rest of the industry mm. and like mm. serve mm. that industry. You gotta find a place to like serve, bruh. And like I did that for years, bruh. Like, yo, bruh. Like, before I even got like one cent from the shit. You served. I served, bro. You have to, yes, and that's sir. and that's what paying your dues is about. People yeah. say like, oh, uh, oh, oh, geez, or like they're grumpy people. We get it, bro. They they have a lot to prove, and they've proved a lot. They've done a lot for us, so we have to say thank you, even if it's like the hardest headed person. Sure. Just give him his, you know, give him his flowers, bro. Like that and person will somehow appreciate it down the road, 100%. and it'll have a, bar, a rebound effect for you. You've just got to be humble, and you've You've got to push and like work with different people. Don't just work with graffiti artists. Like work with photographers. Work with people that do videos. Like people that like do in like I'm one of the few graffiti artists that does interviews. Oh shit, true. And it's because in the I'm, scenes. And it's in the scenes. Yeah, like I'm yeah. open to it. Yes. I, I think also a lot of the people are scared of what a lot of people are gonna think. Cause as much as we like like, yo, like, as much as, like, I would say commercially, hip-hop is not, like, the most, I mean, graffiti is not the most recognized. It is one of the first elements that was there in hip-hop. Yeah. So it's still, like, a lot of the artists still have that underground mentality of which, like, it's cool. You can do that, and, and I'm, I respect those guys highly. Mm. even if not more than the commercial people, the people that have turned it commercial, because they're still doing it from that core passion, of which I also like to still work from that. From time to time, I go back to that, oh, wow, why did I even get into this? And then you remind yourself, you know? Yeah. 
But it's important to like work with different people. Don't stay isolated. Don't isolate yourself. Sure. As just like like even with you, you you always like pushing like yo, let's do this documentary. Then let's do like something. You know, mm -hmm. that's you stepping out of just working with other photographers or just working with fashion people or just like you know what I'm saying. Just yeah. doing a normal average photo shoot. You're looking for like different angles, different mm. content. So like that's a bonus for you. It's only gonna ever come back twice fold for you because sure, you, you're sure. stepping out of that that shell, you know? Sure. Yeah. And that's how you grow, bro. And that's how you you get the consistent clients after a while because who knows? Someone that you took a picture of, it could even just be a high school photo. That person becomes the advertising director for Nike or some shit. Yeah. And then yeah. it's like you remember that guy, Kev Seven? Remember that guy, Tiny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want him to do the back. next photo. Get him back. Exactly. You got to, like, shake hands. And that's people. why you got to also go around and not just be a dick. And not be a dick, not be a dick. Especially at these parties and just events, cool, guys. Bruh. We all get drunk, but you got to handle your own. we all want to look cool, but... <laughs> exactly, yo. Relax. Like, like respect yourself, bro. That, that goes a long way. Like, people will want to work with you if and I'm also, you treat them well, yeah. Straight up. And I'm also a strong believer on you also going to get, like, the world will give you what you give it. Exactly, So if yeah. you want to go around being a dick, bro, like, yeah, it's you're gonna, just good. It's going to mess <laughs> over you, yeah. You're just going to get dick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mama, bro. Hey. I wish I could speak to you much longer than this. I will have it's you on episode cheap. 14. <laughs> no more maths. <laughs> Um, where, what, what can we look out for? Um, which street can we look out for your next maybe um, big project? I have a lot of work in Berea. You can go to KZNSA. No, like maybe you have one that's coming up. Like Oh, something that's coming up? Yeah, something that you're working on, no. Mm, it's just that it's hard to say with some of these projects because a lot of the, sometimes, you know, people go MIA. They hit you up, they have an idea. Oh. You get on the wagon and then it's like, oh, we didn't maybe receive funding like, like or whatever. Like, yeah. you know, music you understand? Just, I know, you tell someone your price, then like, hey, yeah, like, ghost. Then after that, uh, but it's, it's whatever. Yeah. It's, it's what the industry is. Yeah, but next, for now, next actually, actually uh, next next podcast, I actually like to talk about the industry. I'll be like, okay, yeah, I let's want do to that. Squeeze that in, but I'm like, damn. Yeah, I guess now we're there. just catching up with my life story. Yeah, but, yeah. Who Kev yeah. Seb? Who Kev Seb really is? Kev Seb really is. What's your What's your surname, Doug? Ngwenya. Ngwenya, please. Kevin Ngwenya, <laughs> the crocodile. Oh, I thought you were talking about the cost. Huh? The cost of this. Oh, uh, Maboya, Mtimande, Mukwena, Africa. Okay, I'll take myself out, bro. So, <laughs> I know my shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> where, can they, where can they find you on, on the socials, bro? Um, on IG, it's uh, K3V, S-E-V-E-N. So that's K3V, S-E-V-E-N. Um, Facebook, I'm at Kev7. Um, Twitter, it's K3V underscore 7. Um, yeah, I'm actually still trying to learn the internet game. Like, I'm more focused outdoors. The bro. social media game. Yeah, the it's internet brilliant. game. Yeah, but like, 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 even though the internet, I saw the evolution of the internet, the yeah. dial-up internet, like, I was there, like, the computer, like... But it still left you. I think it's the, the apps left me. Oh, shit. Yeah. But in a corner, it's, it's, it's like, think of an... Think of, I'm not calling you an old man, but think of, like, a 50-year-old man. Okay. Uh, although they also grew up in its... Yeah. But day-to-day -day kind of clueless as well. I was actually trying to get my dad on Spotify because he's got, like, CDs and vinyls oh, and USBs. And I was like, Dad, why don't you... Like, we, we you carry this thing every day. Why don't you just have all your music in that phone? In your pocket. Like, all the time. <laughs> so I'm trying to get my dad onto Spotify because he always asks me to download music for him and oh, put it on a USB. And I'm always like... Ah, That's the old way. That's the old way, dog. <laughs> get with the program. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but thanks a lot, Kev. Thanks Word. a lot for having us, bro. Um, Shout out, bro. I still need to do that thing with you, though. Yeah, for it. sure, for sure. We gotta um, get on that. Guys, you can follow Kev. Uh, thanks for sticking around for yet another podcast. BTC. Another another podcast here on BTC. You can follow me, Tiny, on Tiny Films underscore. You can follow this podcast on Be Behind the Creations underscore. You can follow my homeboy Q behind the camera tonight at Q Hello. Productions underscore. Um, and you can follow us, we the Creative Monsters. Um, don't forget to click that subscribe button. If you're ready to subscribe, click that bell button, drop a like. And yeah, we'll see you guys in episode, on episode 10. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you guys for sticking on for another one. It's been nice. Peace, love, and happiness, y'all.